Hello, I'm Peter Boonshaft, and with me is Chris Bernatas, and we are the authors of Sound Innovations Ensemble Development for Young Band, for Intermediate Band, and for Advanced Band. We'd like to share with you some practical ideas for using these books in the new educational environment we find ourselves. Among the greatest concerns we have as we approach the start of this school year is how we will handle ensembles when full band as we know it, in person, is increasingly doubtful. Each passing day seems to confirm that we will be working with our bands in small, in-person groups, online, or in a hybrid model. Simply, we must find ways to have our students thrive. But how do we continue to provide ensemble skill growth with a limited size or no ensemble at all? How do we make sure our students will continue to develop ensemble skills so that they will be where we need them to be when we get back to rehearsals as normal? To that end, we want to provide you with two amazing resources to have your students continue to develop those vital ensemble skills. SI Online, with its free access, ability to use from all types of devices, whether it be smart boards, Chromebooks, laptops, cell phones. Their audio recordings, video instruction, tempo changer right on the screen, and then smart music with its assessment tools, speed control, ability to record and provide immediate feedback to students. To get step-by-step -step tutorials on each of these, SI Online and smart music, please go to alfred.com backslash SI Online or academy.smartmusic.com. And they'll take you through step-by-step -step how to do that. Chris, why don't we share some ideas on using SI Online? Sure. First thing I have to share is my screen. All right. So what you're seeing now is the homepage for SI Online. It's very easy to get students involved in SI Online, siOnline.alfred.com. And then you're going to see the product number. You enter the product number here. If you enter the teacher product code, you get everything that's in the teacher book. If a student puts in their student book code, they access what's in their book. You enter the product code, you push go, and then you'll have access to the books. We have the intermediate and advanced book ready to go and active for audio in SI Online, and the gold book, the young, uh, young level, is in the works to be in here very soon. So you can see over here where it says select a product on mine. I've got lots of products in here. So that's kind of a great feature so that each time you put in a product code, it remembers what you put in. So if you teach multiple levels, multiple different ensembles, you don't have to put in a new product code each time you access the website. So let's find our way to our book. Here we go, Ensemble Development Intermediate. When you open that up, you get the table of contents. Very easy to navigate, kind of matches the whole concept of the series, which is simple, clean, clear, and easy to follow. Concert B-flat major, you can see the table of contents of all the exercises that match the book. Here's where you click to find the audio of each one. We're just going to quickly demonstrate a couple of these exercises because we do agree that even though kids are not meeting as a band right now, they will be. And it's very important to continue to refine those skills that are necessary to play as a band. You learn how to play as an individual, you also have to learn how to play as a member of the ensemble. And that's what these exercises are focused on. Strong individuals will make a strong ensemble. So it's a good opportunity to try to really focus on those self building skills so that when you do get back together, we're even stronger. One of the most beneficial exercises that we find in our book, and again, you can go through and see the different exercise types. One highlight would be our, our scale chorales. These are kind of a synthesis of working on specific skills like a scale and the chorale, which is when those exercises come together and we put them all to the test playing with balance, dynamics, articulations, and all of that. These particular, actually, Peter, why don't you explain how the scale and corral works? Well, in uh, the student book or online, what they're gonna see is two lines. The A line is the scale, uh, their version scale. And the B line is their part within the corral. So you can have all the students playing a B line and it serves as just a regular corral, beautiful corral. Uh, or you can have certain students do the A line. You can have them hum the A line. They can sing the A line. They can play the scale as it is just by itself. But one of the beautiful parts about this is if they're playing their part of the chorale, they're constantly audiating the scale to make sure they're fine tuning, to make sure their accompaniment serves 
the intonation that's required to play that scale corral beautifully. And once you click the audio, it immediately begins to play. And you can see it's a very simple interface, play, forward, reverse. And here's a little bit of it. Actually, I'm going to start it so that you can listen to it. I want you to imagine the scale in your head while it plays. That's fantastic. So not only are they going to practice their individual, how do I play the scale, but they can also imagine what it's going to sound like when they build it back into the ensemble. And the whole concept is to make some beautiful music. And to that end, the chorales that are in the book are just beautiful little lyrical pieces. Uh, and I'm going to show you an example of one of those that we, well, we love them all. But here, let's, we're going to go back to the table of contents. I'll find it this way. While you're doing that, Chris, uh, one thing to be pointed out here is in each of the books, we have uh, chorals by a myriad of wonderful composers, today's composers. Because one of the problems with chorals, if you do a book of chorals all by one composer, though they may be beautiful, it's the same vocabulary, the same language. What we wanted to do was to get the students used to and ready for band music of myriad of different composers so that one day they can be playing a Bob Sheldon chorale, the next day a Randall Stanbridge, the next day a Mike Story. And they're constantly doing lots of vocabulary, lots of uh, sounds and in the language of these composers they are going to play every day in the band room. Now let's give a listen to one of our lyrical chorales. You can hear they're all just beautifully written. In fact, we've had reports of directors using these in concert as scale, or not scale crowds, as chorale suites. Very often, very often we've heard that. How about we take a look at these in smart music now? Great. First of all, it's very important to understand that all three books, the gold, green, and purple, are in smart music, every exercise in every book. And you find them just by searching in the search window, Sound Innovations, Ensemble Development, and they'll show up and then you can pick which book you want. We're going to demonstrate a little bit of the intermediate level or the green level, like to refer to them by color. You can select your instrument, you select the movement or whichever exercise, they're called movements, and then they open up in a new window for you. One thing is that, uh, as Chris mentioned, that SI Online, the green and purple book, the intermediate and advanced books, all the recordings are online right now, ready to go. Uh, the gold book, the young band book, is uh, soon coming. Uh, but right now, all three levels are available with the recordings on smart music. That's right. And an example to show you in here is a scale pattern exercise. The really great thing about this, using it in smart music, is you can differentiate the based on the ability level of your students the default tempo, which you get access by clicking the little arrow, is 68 beats a minute. But let's say you want to make it faster for some kids, you can just make it faster. Or if other kids need to work up to that speed, you can slow it down. We have a great tuner that's available. And as Peter mentioned before, the assessment is very important and needed here. So just practicing things wrong is something my students used to get really good at until we started incorporating some of this. And then they actually practiced getting it right instead of practicing getting it wrong. Uh, very simple nav to navigate, play. If we're going to assess, you would hit the record button. But just to show you a little bit of how it works, you could turn on and off the metronome, on and off a synth synthesized realization of your part, and on and off with the accompaniment as you see fit. And I'm going to kind of turn those on and off as we go.
just a very quick demonstration of how you can change that exercise and use it for your students where they are in their level of development. How about a rhythmic subdivision exercise? Peter, give them a quick tutorial on rhythmic subdivision. The problem, as we all know, uh, when we get into band music, is that students' internal subdivision, that vertical alignment of every part, sometimes is a little tenuous. So what we've done here is the beginning of this exercise, as you can see, they're playing the rhythmic subdivision, what I've always referred to for students as the fastest common denominator. And then while they're doing that, the other half of the band is playing the melody that you see Chris circling around. And then the parts reverse so that every moment that they're playing the melody, there's somebody playing the subdivision against them. Here in this online setting, the beauty is a student practicing at home doesn't need other members of the band to do this. They can practice that skill right here, uh, right now. Uh, so those dotted quarters end up being truly three eighths in length. So Chris, why don't we play a little bit? Sure. They really help tighten up an ensemble and really understand how things sound when they line up together. Our next demonstration is probably what we would think is the most important part of all of these exercises, which is when they come together. We isolate all the skills of what it's like to play in a band, what do you need to do as an individual, and then we put it together as something that's really special and magical, and that is the chorales. As Peter mentioned, we have so many different voices that contributed chorales to this. I love being able to hear the individual voice of each chorale composer. They were not directed to write half note SATB chorales. They were directed to please contribute a lyrical gem that's spoken in your voice. And they definitely did not disappoint. Let's listen to this last one by Robert Sheldon. To me, there's no better way to end our demonstration with a beautiful piece of music like the way we should end every class. I couldn't agree more, Chris. Sometimes the greatest challenges can provide the springboard for great possibilities and opportunities if we continue to be creative, resourceful, and imaginative. We're so delighted to be able to share our enthusiasm for SI Online and smart music and how they can be this wonderful resource for teaching in the current environment. But you already knew that because you're teachers. That's as much who you are as what you do. Just remember, maybe now more than ever, how important you are in the lives of every child you teach.